Hello dear students. Today we are going to discuss a very important topic that is GMOs, wool or bean. So this is a debatable topic and today we are going to discuss many points on this. I am Dr. Ranjana Roy Mishra from Department of Botany Kalindi College, University of Delhi, Delhi. Let us discuss the topic now. First of all, let us discuss what is a GMO. GMO is genetically modified organism. So the full form is genetically modified organism and they are also called transgenic organism. Why they are called transgenic organism? Because genetically modified organisms or transgenic organisms are those organisms in which gene transfer has taken place through artificial means. It me it means that it has happened by artificial methods and not natural. Let's discuss what is the difference between a hybrid and a GMO. A hybrid is a plant or animal which is made by traditional methods of breeding or fertilization while a GMO is made by artificial methods of gene transfer using genetic engineering techniques. These techniques can lead to direct gene transfer or through indirect method of gene transfer. Hybrid is made naturally while GMO is made by techniques of direct gene transfer like electroporation, microprojectile bombardment, polyethylene glycol transfer method, microinjection, microinjection or by indirect method of gene transfer by an intermediate organism. So this intermediate ag organism is generally agrobacterium Tumefaceans or Agribacterium rhizogenous, so this is called indirect method of gene transfer. So the basic difference between a hybrid and GMO is that hybrids are made by natural gene transfer, while GMOs are made by artificial gene transfer or forceful gene transfer of gene from one source to sink by methods of genetic engineering techniques. Now let us discuss benefits of GMOs over hybrids. So in GMOs, sexual incompatibility is not a barrier. The gene can be transferred from any source to any sink. What does that mean? It means that we can take gene from a cat and we can transfer it to dog and vice versa. We can take a gene from plant and transfer it to animal. We can take a gene from prokaryote, transfer it to eukaryote and vice versa. While in traditional methods of breeding, this does not happen. So this is a major benefit of GMO over hybrids. And the second point is, I have already made clear that gene transfer can be from any source to any sink. So uh, this is a major benefit of development of GMOs over hybrid. The third point is method of gene transfer is very precise in GMOs because very precisely the gene is taken out and only the gene of transfer gene of interest is transferred to the recipient organism while when we make a hybrid along with the gene of interest several other genes also get transferred so it is not a precise method of gene transfer and the last benefit uh, this last point which i want to discuss the last benefit of gmo is that the development of gmos uh, takes less time and space compared to the development of hybrids. The GMOs can be developed in a very short time. Say it can be developed in a time duration of one year and then it can be released into field from lab. While for the development of hybrids, acres of lands are, are required, large space is required and it takes approximately a decade to develop hybrid so these are the four major advantages of uh, gmos over hybrids three types of gmos can be developed which are gm microbes gm plants and gm animals so these different organisms can be developed for the benefit of mankind and an example of gm microbes we can take example of gm bacteria an example of gm plants we can take examples of flavor saver tomato bt cotton bt brinjal and golden rice and in gm animals we have several examples um, of gm mice gm rabbit gm sheep and so on 
let us discuss some famous examples of GMOs. So the first picture shows BT cotton. What is BT cotton? It is a genetically modified cotton where the gene transfer occurred from a bacteria, bacillus, thuringiensis and this genetically modified cotton is resistant to pests. The second picture is of genetically modified tomato known as flavor saver tomato which was developed by uh, the technique of antisense RNA technology for delayed ripening to combat post harvest losses. So during transportation from one place to another there are many post harvest losses and this anti ripening technique helped in reducing those losses. The third example you can see that there is this is a picture of Bt brinjal and Bt brinjal uh, has gene from bacillus brinjal has gene from bacillus thuringiensis for pest resistance and the fourth picture is of golden rice which is a genetically modified rice which contains beta carotene gene from uh, the plant daffodil and a bacteria so this was developed to combat vitamin a deficiency which is uh, which uh, which uh, which results in malnutrition in many countries uh, developing countries so these are some of the famous examples of genomes now let's discuss what are the traits which can be improved by genetic engineering techniques uh, in the development of gmos or transgenics so the first tra trait is that we can develop biotic stress resistant plants uh, like we can develop biotic stress resistant plants with respect to insect tolerance, pest tolerance, virus tolerance, bacterial uh, disease tolerance and fungal disease tolerance. The second example is that we can develop abiotic resistant plants which can be grown in drought prone areas, salty areas or frost areas. We can develop herbicide resistant plants which can resist herbicide we can also develop genetically modified plants for nutritional enhancement where the nutritional content of the plant will be more we can we have just discussed the example of flavor saver tomato so we can also uh, develop other fruits or other fruit plants for delayed ripening and reduce the post harvest losses we can increase the photosynthetic efficiency of plants by manipulating the uh, process of photosynthesis by GM technology. We can uh, produce many kinds of metabolites in plants and animals and they can be used as bioreactors for the production of edible vaccines, drugs, milks and hormones. So these are some of the traits which we have just discussed which can be improved with the help of GM. Apart from the benefits of GMOs, there are many apprehensions which are related with GMOs and that is why the consumer do not want to consume these genetically modified plants or their products. So these apprehensions are regarding three issues. First is ethical issues, second is ecological issues and third is economic concerns. So let us, these, uh, let us discuss these issues one by one. The first concern is regarding the ethical issues. Consumers have unacceptability of genetically modified plants or their products. They do not want to consume the products of genetically modified plants because uh, the general feeling is that the genes are alien, they are from unrelated organisms, so it is not natural. The other concern is regarding the antibiotic resistance the consumer thinks that or the people think that because these genes are coming uh, from unrelated organisms and they have antibiotic resistant genes so if they will consume these products they will also become antibiotic resistant the third concern is regarding the allergenicity people think that because the gene transfer has taken by forceful methods by artificial methods so they can result in allergic reactions in the body because we do not know the whole composition of the uh, new product and the other 
issue is regarding the nutritional status consumer thinks that um, uh, because of the change of uh, uh, because of the transfer of alien gene from one source to another thing the nutritional content or the status of the plant has changed and so the exact composition is not known so this is also unacceptable to the consumer and the last concern is regarding intellectual property rights and patent issues so there are several issues which are related to with uh, ipr and patent issues and that is why there is uh, this concern regarding the ethical issues related to genetically modified the second concern is regarding the ecological um, issues there is apprehension that gene flow will transfer from gmos to to uh, the other plants or the other organisms and it is believed that uh, it will alter the gene pool and it is uh, there is also an apprehension that because of the gene flow uh, the insect will develop pesticide resistance and this will be harmful for the environment also the herbicide resistance resistant weeds can be formed because of the transfer of gene from genetically modified organisms to weeds growing in the field so all this will result in the loss of biodiversity because there will be monoculture there, there will be evolution of monoculture because of the introduction of gmos and all this would lead to uh, change in dynamics of the soil because because uh, the, there will be change in the organisms growing in the the third parameter which we are going to discuss is economic concern so economic concern is related to the monopo monopoly of multinational companies so it is uh, it is an apprehension because multinational companies are producing these gen genetically modified organisms so uh, there will be a monopoly of these company like monsanto myco dupont which are majorly involved in the production of these genetically modified organisms and ultimately this will lead to the exploitation of the poor in conclusion what i conclude from my presentation or what i want to say at the end of this presentation is that no technology is full proof transgenic technology is a great technology and if this technology is utilized the we can the human kind can be benefited we can ensure food security in our country and other countries using this technology because uh, as we know that global human population is increasing day by day but the land which is required for this huge population is uh, diminishing so this technology has the potential to achieve a balance between these two because we, using this technology we can develop drought tolerant plants herbicide tolerant plants soil tolerant plants so these plants can be grown in any area and my opinion is that this technology has tremendous potential in solving the present day problems and this technology cannot be dumped because of the apprehensions which are which have no scientific grounds uh, the public can be make made aware of the uh, uh, real uh, scientific or real scientific grounds real scientific reasons regarding these apprehensions and this technology should be given a chance for the benefit of mankind